Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, I rise to speak in this budget debate fresh from a two-week recess in which I travelled around the Rangitata election. I am fresh, discussing aspects of the budget with my constituents. Now, the feedback I've had has been face-to-face, but it's also been through things I've read in the media. So I've got some quotations I want to use here this afternoon when I talk about this budget, a budget for the time. The South Canterbury... Um, District Health Board Chief Executive Chris Fleming said, it's good to see the government's continuing commitment to the health and disability sector and in particular the commitment to the new investments announced, particularly given the economic climate we all face. End quote. Good endorsement. Then there was a comment from Timaru Grey Power Secretary John Button. Unlike members on the other side, I'm not going to just read the supportive of the government comments. I'm going to read Mr Button's comment, which was he expressed some concerns about the changes to KiwiSaver and Working for Families. I'll return to these later. But he also said the increased funding for dementia care beds by $44 million over four years is very encouraging. My constituents agree with him. The Timaru Boys High School rector, Kevin O'Sullivan, said he was pleased that education was spared a swinging axe. What he should have also said is there's $1.4 billion additional funding over the next four years in education. Now, we know, because it's been said time and time again in this House, there's $550 million more going into ECE. Now, that's a far cry from the mantra we hear on the other side of the House that there have been cuts. Cuts to the spend on ECE, there has not been changes to policy yet. But it makes it really uncomfortable for the members on the other side because they want to say we don't care about ECE, and we do, we value it so much, we want more students in it. Because when a, ch- when a child heads off to primary school having not been involved in early childhood education, they are behind the eight ball. That's right. Over the past few months I've visited lots of ECE centres. They've been heartened to hear and they've told me lately that there is a substantial slice of new money in the budget for ECE. But now I want to return to Mr Button's comments about KiwiSaver and working for families. It behoves me to offer him some reassurance on both fronts. Firstly, KiwiSaver. The proposed changes won't come into effect until after the election. They give rise to an increase in private savings and they cause KiwiSaver to become more financially sustainable. Well, what's wrong with that then? Those changes will free up $2.6 billion over four years, but they won't stop the KiwiSaver fund reaching $60 billion over a period of 10 years. That's fantastic. Look, there's 20,000 people going into this every single month, and they know the government will still be generous enough to give a $1,000 kickstart, and that the taxpayer, because it is taxpayers' money, will be putting $521 in, uh, in each year still. But this, in fact, is certainly making this program much more sustainable. It's about the the voters of New Zealand deciding, though, after the November election, they get to decide a more sustainable KiwiSaver or a generous but unaffordable KiwiSaver. Then there's working for families. I'll give you a couple of examples. It's a large but generous scheme. The costs have certainly ballooned. From $1.5 billion back in 0506, it's now become $2.8 billion this year. It really is, has a future that's in doubt if it continues the same way. We're making some changes that will shave $448 million over four years off that, but there are 280,000 families that do not receive a cut. In fact, if you look at a high-income family, now they will receive a cut. A high-income family with four children earning $125,000 a year will actually receive $12.66 less a week. But compare that to a low-income family, again with four children, but on a very low income of 27000 they're going to get $14.18 more every week. They're amongst the 280000 who get more. These but the changes more. don't start until after the election. They come in over seven years. In anyone's language, that means the voters get to decide. Our changes target those in need. It's a sad indictment on the former Labor government that all they did was a cynical vote-buying exercise where they chucked surpluses at schemes and they didn't target them at all. They did not. But actually, back on November the 8th, 
um, 2008. They actually, the voters saw through it. We are fixing them up, Ms Ardern. Working for families is one. Kiwi Saver is one. Yes, of course it was a bribe. Fiscal prudence is something that New Zealanders practice every day in their households. And they want the government to do the same. They want the government to live within its means. And that's exactly what Bill English's budget does. This budget was greeted with confidence by the ratings agencies. We were spared a ratings downgrade. In the words of the Timaru Herald editor... That fact alone made yesterday's budget a success. That's right. Now, I want to talk quickly about an announcement that was music to the ears of every New Zealander that understands the value of fresh water. Our package is about the management of fresh water resource so that the government gets to experience the gold that is in fact its value, so that New Zealanders do. The budget commits $35 million over five years to get irrigation projects um, proposals up and running. Those proposals will be accepted from this month. We're not wasting any time. It's June and they will be accepted from this month. But getting the big project underway is always challenging, and in my electorate we've certainly seen that. So the government has recognised in 2013-14 that they need to consider a cornerstone investment, becoming an equity stakeholder, and so $400 million has been proposed from that year, 13-14, for that. But it's not just enough to use it for irrigation. We've got to make sure we clean up the fresh water that's not in a good state, whether it's in an aquifer, a lake or a river. So we're putting an additional $15 million into a contestable fund for that purpose. But actually, that is added to money already there, $264.8 million to clean up water. Not an inconsiderable sum of money. My constituents want to know that the government's looking after their health. They love the fact that there are 1,000 more nurses and 500 more doctors now. They love the fact we've put aside $18 million more to train an extra 40 doctors. How much? How much? 18 million more. My constituents, my constituents are also great supporters of Plunkett. This weekend in Timaru we celebrate the 34th annual Plunkett Art Show. I used to be on the committee. This wonderfully successful fundraiser helps Plunkett to deliver services to families, support services. The government funds the well child checks and we are funding an extra 54,000 through budget 2011. That's 18,000 new mums who will have three extra visits in the first two months. And I think that's fantastic. That's where we pick up and understand what is happening in those homes in the um, time they're under two months old. We're also delivering $68 million worth of additional elective surgery. That means hip replacements for older New Zealanders, cataract surgery, knee replacements. That will improve the lives of many, many New Zealanders. My constituents want to know that the government cares about the vulnerable members of our society. So they welcome that funding for dementia, for, the, for um, well child checks for young babies, and also for those people needing surgery and those who don't access early childhood education. But there's more. There is $43 million for a very special 4,500 children. They're in state care. These kids are 17 times more likely to go to jail. And Ms Chatwick spoke about vulnerable young people yeah, who right. would go to jail. This money is for them. This is to make sure that they don't have a life which is likely to lead them to jail. How ghastly looking at them and thinking that was their life to come compared to our own children. I want to touch now on the people of Rangitata who live 45 to 120 minutes up the road from where the devastating earthquakes happen. Thousands of my constituents have had damage to homes and businesses, but nothing like what's happening in Christchurch. These people are our friends, they're our relatives, they're former neighbours, and they're in Christchurch City, the districts of Waimak and Selwyn, and we're delighted that the government has seen fit to put $5.5 billion in the budget yeah, to yeah. provide certainty to rebuild Canterbury. Lastly, 
I want to touch on the sentiments of the farming community of Rangitata. They are gobsmacked by the financial illiteracy of, in particular, Stuart Nash. They've cried foul. They say when we earn money, we pay tax. They say we've had a tough couple of years, but things are definitely getting better. They want apples to be compared with apples. They don't like the financial illiteracy that has been shown by Labor, and they really hate the fact that Order. Labor is trying to consolidate their... Member's time has expired. Oh. Materia Ture. Thank you, Mr Speaker. On May 30th this year, 